So I wanted to start up by just saying, you know, it's really interesting. I'm, I'm writing a book right now called Divine Recovery, A Call to Arms to Take Back What the Enemy Has Stolen. How many, how many really sense that God is saying it's time to really get Get on the ball and start taking back what the enemy has stolen from us. So, of course, if you're writing a book about the spirit of robbery, um, you'll understand why I had this particular experience. We were on, uh, we went on a transatlantic cruise, for those of you that don't know. Um, it was one of the things my dad said that he wanted most of all for his 90th birthday was to do one of those. And uh, he said, you know, Jane, this may be the last time that I ever am able to go on a cruise. And I said, well, Dad, you've been saying that for the last 15 years, but, um, but it, you know, you just, you never know. And so uh, he is getting a little bit more, he, uh, having mobility issues. Anyway, one of the stops um, took us to Nice, France, the south of France, the French Riviera. And they dropped us off in this little market for a time, uh, like a farmer's market, a flower market. Um, it was a beautiful little area that we were walking through and I had my mom's arm because she was having a little bit of struggle with with her her walking that day and I was uh, walking with my mom and I had my cross my crossbody purse on um, that crossed over and came to about right here and because we were in a crowd of people I had my hand on my little crossbody purse very touristy area yes and so as um, at one moment I saw something that I wanted to look at I said mom let's go over here I had her and I said, let's go over here and let's look at this. And when I took my hand off my purse and started moving that way, somebody pushed in on me and I felt my purse unzip. And I immediately turned and grabbed my purse and looked and there was two women that were walking next to me like, I mean, they weren't actually doing that, but that was the look on their face. And within seconds, this large, I mean, really tall, tall Frenchman, he was probably, what, six foot five, he walks up behind this woman, and he whops her on the head, and he starts screaming at the top of his lungs. Everybody in the whole place is looking at me. My husband didn't even know what had happened. They take off running. He starts running after them. Y'all know when we go places, things get stirred up, right? And so my husband was like, wow, I wonder what that was all about. I said, well, it was about me. <laughs> yeah, he was screaming in French, so we didn't know. But, uh, but obviously, she had just tried to pick my pocket, okay? Um, has, has anybody ever had your pocket picked before? It's very violating, you know? It, it's, it, yeah, it's like, are you kidding me? That just happened. And so I thought, you know, I'm writing a book on the spirit of robbery, so I get it. But you know, something, something that just kind of really impressed me on that is that the, the, the thief came in at a moment that I was distracted, right? And so I feel like the Lord's speaking to us during this season, and he's saying, listen, we can't afford to get distracted. We got to keep our eye on the prize. We got to keep our eye um, uh, 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 on what's going on around us. And of course, my brother, my baby brother, who's like six foot three and two fifty, my ba he's I always call him my baby brother though. And he said, you know, Jane. He said, you need to ask yourself, why did they pick you? I said, because I look nice. But you know what? We need to be like the guy. I'm not encouraging physical violence. But in the spirit, when the enemy comes in to steal from us, we need to be like that guy that whopped her in the head and chased her down and yelled at her. So, t so often we're so passive. We're like, oh my gosh, I guess that just happened. Now, I'm not, again, I'm not saying do that to people. But I'm saying in the spirit, we've got to let ourselves get riled up and say absolutely not. When I was kind of studying this and studying... Um, as I'm writing some things, I, I came across a, a comeback story that is maybe not a common one that you might hear about, but I think it's pretty fascinating. And it's about a young man in the book of Acts who traveled with Paul on his first missionary journey. And his name was, well, we call him John Mark, because in the scriptures, several times in the book of Acts, it refers to him as John, who was called Mark. Um, John was his Hebrew name, which was one of the most common Hebrew names of the day. And Mark was his Roman name, which was one of the most common Roman names of the day. But we know him as John Mark. And in, uh, he, was a, he was a cousin to Barnabas. 
And, you know, Barnabas and Paul were on their first missionary journey together. Now, we don't know really a whole lot about what happened, but in Acts chapter 13, it kind of talked about some hardship that came along the way in this first missionary journey, and they weren't seeing a whole lot of fruit. Uh, People weren't responding very well to the gospel. And then there's just one little verse in there that says that John returned home to Jerusalem. And you wouldn't really even think that much about it. Paul went on, and then John returned home. To Jerusalem. You wouldn't really think that much about it until you read again on Paul's next missionary journey in Acts chapter 15. And I want to read this this little verse to you. In Acts chapter 15 and verse 36, it says, Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark. But Paul insisted that they should not take him with them, the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to do the work. So are you getting the message that Paul was a little ticked off at John Mark? (laughs) Barnabas, you know, Barnabas, his name means son of encouragement. Barnabas was like, no, let's take him. Let's, let's, let's give the guy another chance. And Paul was like, listen, he bailed on us. He bailed on us the last trip. He quit. He was a, he was a quitter. He got discouraged. He, he didn't do it right. He just forget him. Listen to what it says. The contention between Paul and Barnabas became so sharp that they parted from one another. Paul and Barnabas went separate ways because of an argument about this young man named John Mark. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. Paul took Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of God. And so Paul wasn't being super grace-filled, super mercy-filled, you can say. Um, And he had no interest in giving John Mark a second chance. And in this instance, I have to say, you know, some, some of us in this room have more of a tendency to be the Barnabas, the one that's always willing to give somebody a second chance. Others, maybe not so much, and maybe for good reason, okay? But in this case, Barnabas gave John Mark a second chance. How many are glad that God's given us second chances? I don't, I don't know if there's probably a person in this room that hasn't been given a second chance by God at some moment, okay? And so Barnabas gave John Mark a second chance. And then we find later on in Paul's writings, when he's writing from the prison uh, in Philemon, he says, he calls John Mark my fellow worker. And then later on in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, send John Mark to me because he's profitable for me in the work of the Lord. John Mark was given a second chance and he made a comeback. By the way, almost every biblical scholar that I have read believes John Mark is Mark who wrote the gospel of Mark. What if Mark had not been given a second chance? And so I think think as we move forward in our walk with the Lord, Maybe we've been given a second chance. Maybe we need to always be looking for ways to provide a second chance for others. To come out of a place of of darkness, to come out of a place of despair. Maybe somebody that you know is really messed up. Maybe they've really blown it in their lives. But let me just say, I believe that we're in a season right now where God is saying, remember John Mark. Remember what happened when Barnabas, the son of encouragement, gave him a second chance.